Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler. Today, we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 10 on Rigid Motions and Parallel Lines. Now, we've worked with parallel lines actually quite a bit so far in Math 8. All right, we've looked at their properties, we've explored them, we've thought about them, but in the long run of things, we haven't really seen why the properties that go along with parallel lines are the way they are. What's great is we can actually use rigid motions, specifically translations and rotations, to understand some of the properties of parallel lines. You know, where they come from, why they are what they are. So that's what this lesson is going to be all about, just exploring the properties that arise in parallel lines by using rigid motion properties. Anyway, let's kind of pop in and start with a little bit of review, some parallel line review. Let's take a look at exercise number one. In the diagram, lines M and N are parallel and are crossed by transversal line T. The eight angles formed are shown numbered. Answer the following. Letter A asks us to list all corresponding angle pairs. All right, given that this is something that we've done actually in a couple lessons so far, what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and see if you can name all the corresponding angle pairs that show up in this diagram. Take a little bit of time now. All right, let's do it. So, you know, keep in mind what we mean by corresponding angle pairs is that there are two angles that show up sort of in the same relative position on the two lines. So for example, angle one, if we want to think about it, is in the upper left-hand corner of these four angles. What angle is in the upper left-hand corner here? That would be angle seven. So angle one and angle seven are a corresponding angle pair. Right? And we can do this with all of them. Angle 2 corresponds to angle 8, angle 4 corresponds to angle 5, and angle 3 corresponds to angle 6. Now let's go through those really quick. We're going to say angle 2 and angle 8. Let's do angle 3 and angle 6 and angle 4 and angle 5. All right. It's just as if you know, we took these four and we literally kind of put them on top of these four, what angles would lie on top of the other ones? And that's our corresponding angle pairs. Now letter B, we also have a very important piece of terminology, so let's go through that one. Give the two pairs of alternate interior angles. All right, so alternate interior angle pairs are exceptionally important in parallel lines. We've seen them in two lessons already. See if you can name the two pairs of alternate interior angles. All right, so there are four angles that lie on the interior of the parallel lines, angles 1, 3, 8, and 5. Then we're talking about alternate, ones that lie on either side of the transversal. So angle 1 is an alternate interior pair with angle 5, and angle 3 is an alternate interior pair with angle 8. So let me just bring this up a little bit. Let's say angle 1 and angle 5, angle 3, and angle 8. All right, letter C. What is true about corresponding angle pairs and alternate interior angle pairs? So what's true about angle 1 and angle 5, angle 3 and angle 8, angle 1 and angle 7? etc. What's true about those? Pause the video now and write something down. Well, what's true about all of these that we've worked with in previous lessons is that they have the same measures. All right. So if angle 1 was 120 degrees, angle 5 would be 120 degrees. If angle 3 was 55 degrees, angle 8 would be 55 degrees. And I could go through all of these as well. We could either say they have the same degree measures, or they have the same measures, or we could say that the angle pairs are congruent, right? So either way, it really means the same thing. So I'm going to say they have equal measures, but it's completely okay to say they are congruent. All right. 
little guest arrival of our red pen there. Um, so this is important. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at why these pairs of angles are congruent and how we can use rigid body motions to really be able to explain why they're congruent and also to be able to visualize it so that it helps us understand for later problems and helps us to recognize. Now before we get into that though, we've got a few more exercises to do for background and review. So let's take a look at exercise number two. For each of the following, use appropriate geometric tools like tracing paper and a compass to do the following transformations of line AB. Label the images A prime, B prime. All right. Now, what's great is you can actually just use tracing paper for both of these things. Let, let, let's actually kind of do them together. Letter A it says translate line AB such that A maps to point C. So what you're going to want to do is take your tracing paper out, put it on top of this diagram, draw out line AB, and also draw this dashed line in, okay? Because that's going to be sort of our line that we shift this along, right? Now, once you have that, then all we need to do is take this and just translate it like this. And now I'm going to put A prime here and B prime there. And I'm just going to leave that line like that. All right. I mean, again, for you, you'd kind of do it with tracing paper, draw out a new line, and you'd have it. All right. Now, a 180 degree rotation, that's what we're looking at in letter B. It says rotate line AB about point C by 180 degrees. And remember, we don't really have to say clockwise or counterclockwise because quite frankly, with a 180 degree rotation and none others, it really doesn't matter. Actually, it wouldn't matter with a 360 degree rotation either, but whatever. With a 180, it does not matter. Now you can use that, do that with a compass, but you can also do it very easily with tracing paper. Again, the way you can do it with tracing paper, which is kind of cool, is you lie your tracing paper down, all right? Now these two dashed lines weren't on your paper to begin with, but if you draw out a dashed line going from A through the center of rotation and then extend it a ways, same thing with letter B, all right? Although you don't have to make these dashed. What's really cool is it's now quite easy to do the rotation. All we need to now do is take our tracing paper, rotate it about point C, and tell those dashed lines kind of line up on each other again. All right, mine didn't work out quite perfectly, but, but good enough. I rotated it 180 degrees, and again, I know it's rotated 180 degrees because a 180 degree rotation will take a line and just kind of lie it on top of itself. Now, granted, this time, right here, this is B prime, and this is A prime. Now, what's the point of these two very, very specific transformations? One is a translation, and one is a rotation specifically by 180. That 180 is important. Well, take a look at image line A prime, B prime compared to AB, and again, image line A prime, B prime compared to AB down here. What do you think is true about this compared to this? and this compared to this. Think about that for a minute. Well, in both cases, the image line ended up being parallel to the pre-image line. Now that always occurs with translations. If I take any line and I translate it in a direction that isn't like right along the line, I will produce an image line that is parallel to the original. And we looked at that back when we were doing translations. Rotations that will also be true as long as I rotate by a point, around a point by 180 degrees. If I rotate about a point by 180, I will end up with an image line that is parallel to the original. Those two facts are amazingly important in terms of where we're going with this. And that's what was down here at the bottom of the sheet. I just thought it was on the next screen. Both translations and rotations by 180 degrees produce image lines that are parallel to the original. And once we have that knowledge, now we can really look at parallel line properties. So let's get into that in the next exercise. Here we go, exercise number three. On the diagram below, line AB is crossed by line CD. Translate angle DCB and angle DCA along CD so that C is mapped to D. Label the images angle D prime, C prime, B prime and angle D prime, C prime, A prime. Okay, that was a little bit wordy. 
but we can do this. So what I'd like you to do is, I'm gonna have you do this on your own, then we'll do it together. I'd like you to trace the entire diagram on tracing paper, that's the way you're gonna to have to do the translation, then just slide the entire sheet so that C gets translated up to D, make sure that this line kind of stays on top of itself so that you're getting a translation and you're not getting any kind of rotation thrown in. Once you have that, then you know, draw your line A prime, C prime, B prime, and then let's talk about what we observe. Take a moment to do that. All right, well here we go. You know, for me it's pretty easy. All I have to do is kind of shift this up like this until C ends up at D. That means that this is going to be A prime, this is going to be B prime, and yeah, C prime and D are in exactly the same location, but that's okay. All right, there we go. Easy enough. Now, right, letter B asks us, what must be true about the original angles and their images Y? All right, so let, let, let's take a look. You know, here we've got the original angle. Let's just talk about angle DCB. Right here it is, angle DCB. And here's its image, angle D prime, C prime, B prime, right? The question is, what must be true about those two angles? And the answer is, they must have equal measures because a translation is a rigid motion. Sorry. Right? So anytime, anytime we take any geometric object, whether that's an angle, a triangle, a quadrilateral, or even a given point, right? is if we take any geometric object and we apply a rigid motion to it, and that could be a translation, a rotation, or a reflection, it will produce an object that is congruent and has the same measures as the original. So because we simply shifted this angle using a translation, then this angle, and we can mark equal angles with arc marks. Sounds like an aardvark, it's not. But we can say that those two angles have the same measure. Likewise, the obtuse angle, I'm going to put a double arc to distinguish it from the other one. These two angles must also have equal measures, right? And again, it's simply because all we did was a translation, and translations do not change angle measurements. Now, letter C asks us, what must be true about line AB and line A prime, B prime? And I probably should have also thrown in a Y question mark here, but what must be true about A prime, B prime versus A, B? Pause the video now and write down what must be the relationship between those two lines. All right, well, they must be parallel, right? Um, they must be parallel because translations, there's almost an end, translations map lines to parallel lines, right? They've got to be parallel, right? We just looked at that in the last exercise. Whenever we translate a line, Right? It produces an image that is parallel to the original. But this is really cool, right? Because this proves, or at least explains, one of the fundamental properties of parallel lines. Letter D. Translations help to show that what types of angle pairs created by parallel lines are equal in measure. So in other words, we were able to just show, by doing this translation, that if you've got two parallel lines, this angle and this angle have to be equivalent equal measures, and this angle and this angle have to be equal measures. Well, what kind of angle pairs are those? Pause the video now and see if you can write something down. Well, corresponding angle pairs.
And this kind of makes a lot of sense, right? Corresponding angle pairs. That almost looks like a P, but not really. That probably didn't make it much better, but corresponding angle pairs. And again, you, you could probably really see it if we go all the way back. I mean, well, maybe not that far. Maybe just back to here, right? If I literally took this line and I just translated it up to this line, right, then they would certainly lie on top of each other because a translation would map it to be parallel, right? So it would be right on top of this one. This angle would just get shifted up to that one. This one would get translated up to that one. This one would get translated up to that one. And this one would get translated up to that one. And so translations are a good way of understanding why corresponding angle pairs created by parallel lines are equal in measure. Now all of this though is based on the idea that whenever we translate a line, it creates an image that is parallel to the original. Let's keep going though and see what else we can use rigid body motions to help think about. Let's take a look at exercise number five. In the diagram below, do the following. Letter A, rotate angle BAC by 180 degrees about point B, label the image angle B prime, A prime, C prime. All right, so again, I'd like you to do this with some tricks.